Mammalian birth is today's subject and I just want to explore a bit with you about what that actually means. So as a human female, often I will think about birth in all different ways, but the terminology banded around birth can sometimes sound a bit like um, instinctive, biological, normal, natural. We hear these terms all the time. And then you speak to other women who have given birth and it kind of seems like birth can never be instinctive or normal or natural given how complicated lots of other women experience it to be. So this conversation today really is not about giving birth in either way. You can give birth however you want. It doesn't have to be the instinctive, normal, natural route. Um, we understand that birth is definitely complicated sometimes, but this is about working with the physiology. It's about understanding the physiology of birth and especially mammalian birth and working with it as opposed to working against it. I want to tell you the story of Lucy and the tiger and Lucy is who I have here. Now I didn't call her Lucy, Lucy is the first woman essentially. So this is a small replica of Lucy. You can see she's not the most attractive woman you've ever seen but she is pregnant. And this is all about Lucy's birth. Now if you, we are looking at mammalian birth, which is what we're looking at today, um, what you need to know is that for a mammal it's all about safety. So Lucy would have chosen a place to give birth that she felt safe, whether that was in a cave or some scrubland, she would have absolutely made sure she felt safe. The next thing we need to know about mammalian birth is that it's hormone driven and the hormones that Lucy has in her body that start birth, um, the main one is oxytocin. Now you might have heard about oxytocin already, it's a very trendy hormone to talk about and we've all got oxytocin in our bodies. I have and so do you. It's a social hormone, so when we have friends and family around um, and gather around and cook for each other and socialise, um, it will be oxytocin that we're producing. It's also the hormone of love, so when we make love it's oxytocin, when we fell in love it's oxytocin that drives that whole process and it's definitely the hormone of childbirth and of breastfeeding. So Lucy's oxytocin is really, really high as she starts to give birth. Um, if you can imagine oxytocin keeps the surges or the contractions on a hormonal loop. Imagine it like the electricity that keeps everything going. So here's Lucy feeling fairly safe where she's chosen to give birth with a good amount of oxytocin that is keeping her surges coming every couple of minutes, doing really, really well. Now we know that she's going to continue to labour, except in the distance Lucy spots something. And what she spots is the tiger. Now, it's Ice Age, so it could have been a woolly mammoth, but the early learning centre didn't have any, so we're going to go with the tiger. Um, so she spots a tiger, and the hormones that Lucy produces when she spots a tiger or a predator of any description is the hormone of fear, essentially. So fear um, accompanies the hormone adrenaline. Adrenaline produces within all of us the fight or flight mechanism. So adrenaline does a couple of things to your body when you experience it. The first thing it does is it makes you breathe quite quickly and rapidly. Um, it will start to make your heart beat a little bit faster. It will begin to divert the blood and the oxygen to all the places that you might need to run because now we are talking about survival. And that means your heart, your lungs, your legs, your brain, um, if we are talking about somebody who is giving birth or in the process of giving birth, then what we know is if this is a fight or flight situation, then the birth really isn't priority. So for Lucy, this birth is no longer her first priority, survival is. And that means that as the adrenaline begins to rise, the oxytocin in her body will begin to fall because adrenaline and oxytocin cannot live compatibly in a human body. I know it's a bit mad talking about tigers because actually there will not be any tigers in your birthing room on the day. You and I both know that, but I'd like you to start to think about what it is that's your tiger. Everybody's got one, I've got one, you've got one. What is it that's going to trigger an adrenaline response in your labour? It could be a fear of needles, it could be a fear of doctors, maybe it's the stress of moving from home to hospital, maybe it's the smell of the hospital, or it could be something completely random that 
neither you or I have really thought about. So just have a bit of a sift around in your brain. Start to think about what it could be that is your tiger because we need you to do some work on that. And in the rest of the pack, it explains to you how to work with your thoughts and your feelings, working through some of the techniques and the scripts that are really going to help you to release some of that.